been a pleasure to savour his mesmeric stepovers, breathtaking dribbles, pinpoint passes, spectacular goals and that great big smile. Sadly, JJ Okocha's unique repertoire will never be seen again on the international stage. The 32-year-old took his final bow for Nigeria last month at the Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt. Not until you go to Nigeria and watch again, you realize what football means to those people down there. And it's been always a, a great joy, you know, to put on that, that jersey and to know that you've got so many people behind you, so many people looking up to you to, to make their day, you know. And I'm so glad that I've put smiles in so many people's faces over the years, you know. And it's been a, a great pride, you know, to, to put on that jazz. Had the Super Eagles qualified for this summer's FIFA World Cup, Okocha would probably have delayed his decision. It's the first time since 1990 they won't be there. Picking up just one point from their two games against Angola was their downfall. The two nations finished level on 21 points. But the Angolans reached their first FIFA World Cup thanks to their better head-to-head -head record against Nigeria. Assistant coach Daniel Amakachi. The blame goes all around. You know, uh, you, you you blame the, the the country, you blame the management, you blame the players, you blame the, you know the technical crew and all that stuff. You know, it's all around one thing. You know, you cannot pick one figure and say this is this. We have a, a game that I think Nigeria went with probably only 14 players. And that's a shame you know, for a national team to uh, end up with 14 players away in a World Cup qualifying you know, should, should have never happened, but it did happen, and that's where things started getting wrong. Their attempts to qualify for Germany were shrouded in controversy. Firstly, a dispute with FIFA and the Nigerian government over the undemocratic way in which the federation appoints its members almost resulted in an international ban for the squad. Also, few other countries have had such major problems persuading players to turn up. Many, including Okocha, have been lambasted after not showing for important matches. Current coach Augustin Egwavon is all too familiar with the club versus country dispute. If teams are trying to hold back to their players, we can understand. But again, they should also understand that these players have only one country to play for. You know, because when you're playing, if you're international, it's an advert advantage for you, and um, you know it just it just you know blows your CV up. But nonetheless, I can understand they paid, paid a huge amount of money. I think FIFA and UEFA and CAF have to try to fashion a way out and see how you know all the um, calendar will, will, will tally. Egwavon took over from Christian Chukwu towards the end of the qualifying campaign. Although attempts were later made to replace Egwavon with Frenchman Philippe Troussier, he kept his job for the Africa Cup of Nations. With almost a full squad, only Middlesbrough's Igbeni Yakubu chose to stay away. Nigeria topped their group. They eventually reached the semi-final, where they went down 1-0 to the Ivory Coast. Sadly, Okocha played only a bit part due to injury. One of several pluses was the form of 18-year-old John Obi Mikkel. That bodes well for the FIFA World Cup in 2010. It's a major target, not for only Nigeria, but for all the African countries, you know, because uh, I think uh, we'll have a big say. You know, the, we'll, the, the weather factor will contribute a lot. Uh, being in South Africa, being very hot and being humid is very hot. You know, I think it will help us a lot, and I think the, it will be the, the first opportunity for us as an African country to try and see that we win the World Cup. Obi Mikkel was outstanding at the FIFA World Youth Championship in Holland last year. There, Nigeria lost 2-1 to Argentina in the final. Then as now, the midfielder remains the subject of a transfer tug-of-war between Manchester United and Chelsea. Marseille's Tai Taiwo also graduated from that youth team to the senior side in Egypt. But it's Obi Mikkel who Nigeria will look to, to ensure fortunes take a turn for the better. He's a very gifted player, he's a very talented player, you know, but uh, coming from Nigeria, you know, when you go into Nigeria today, you can have maybe one million Mikel Obis. You know, that's, that's the kind of uh, players and that's the kind of players that come out of from Nigeria. You know, that's where the likes of JJ come, like, came out from, the likes of Kano. Because they are players like that that are gifted and that all-round 
give to players. You know, but I'm sure you know if he keeps fit and well and smart up here, he'll be one of the best players in the world very soon. In Nigeria, the failure to qualify for Germany was a huge disappointment. Having participated at the last three FIFA World Cups, they'd established themselves as one of Africa's footballing heavyweights. Finishing third in Egypt did little to ease the country's frustration with the Super Eagles. Those one million Obi Mikkels in the making mean Nigerians are expecting the next four years to herald good times, but Akocha won't be there to help the cause, at least not as a player. I love football and football has been my life and we all always remain in my gene so uh, I will always be a supporter and of course I'll, I will be contributing if whenever I'm needed I'll be uh, contributing to, to the progress of Nigerian football. Meantime Akosha will continue his club career in the English Premiership with Bolton Wanderers to the end of the season. He's played in three FIFA World Cups, won the Africa Cup of Nations in 1994 and helped his country to Olympic gold in 96. One of Africa's greatest entertainers will be sadly missed. Thanks for the memories, JJ.